Welcome to the Diga Motors uh, webinar. My name is Kelly Boss. Today we are talking 2023 car buying trends. And I'm glad to welcome my, my guests today and the panelists. Uh, on my immediate left is uh, John Singo, the Revenue Officer of EV Charger. Thank you very much. Uh, William Gatoto, uh, the Sales Manager at AutoCheck. And then we have Titus Mudaka from uh, Motor Consult. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for making time. And we are talking about car, car buying trends in 2023. And where I'd like us to start this conversation, so just so we can paint a picture, is uh, try and look at what w was there before and marry it to what we are seeing right now. So starting with you, William, perhaps talk on... Uh, previously, we had Toyota dominating the market so much. Uh, what was that like and what are you seeing right now in the market? Okay, thank you. Now, uh, what would happen in the past is uh, there was no importation of uh, uh, used cars as we have now. Okay. If you wanted to buy a car, you had to buy it from a dealership, uh, purely Toyota Kenya. But then the market opened up for importation. Yeah. Now, there's a bit more in terms of uh, cash uh, reach uh, that uh, banks are now able to finance and all that. Okay. So, with the millennials, because that's where the highest uh, buying uh, is taking place, Millennials are willing to explore. They'll buy anything uh, that uh, suits them, especially where tech is involved. Okay. So to answer your question also, um, we're seeing a bit of uh, Hondas uh, coming in, uh, you know, the Honda fit. We are seeing a bit of uh, Demios uh, coming in. Mazda has also come up in a big way. Yeah. Um, you know, in that category, yeah. when you go to the higher, uh, uh, high-end uh, vehicles, there's a lot of uh, BMW, uh, BMW X3s, the uh, uh, 3 Series. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a trend. Okay. And then uh, maybe because of the, the price, the market price right now, uh, a very new, a fresh off the boat car would be quite expensive, uh, mm -hmm. Titus. Mm -hmm. And so what are the trends in terms of buying new cars uh, mm -hmm. or new used cars in Kenya? Uh, as a second and uh, motor vehicle dealer, I've seen so much improvement in our sales uh, trends. Uh, comparing to the previous years, last year, uh, last year but one, uh, because of the pricing hikes. On the importation, on the small cars, the pricing have almost doubled. And today, many guys buying, they, they, they want to see, they are buying a practical thing. So whatever money, whatever money you have, you don't want to spend a lot of money, and then you have a, that small car with the price where you can get maybe a, a bigger second-hand car that yeah. can suit your needs. Yeah. So I can say for sure the market has changed. Right. We are uh, getting more clients opting to buy locally. Yeah. Other than importing, otherwise you have that special order you want to make on a certain uh, car. Yeah. And you, of course you have the power okay. yeah, in financing to buy from the other side. Right. Because why would I spend 1.2 1.3 on maybe a fit, a new fit, a uh, Demio, yet I could get the same for a used Premio or a used uh, a Leon. Mm. Is that something? Yeah, sure. Because now, now, that's why we say it's about practicality and the needs yeah. of the client. It maybe you are driven by, you need to do maybe a commercial venture on that car and you're dictated by the market, you have to buy a, a new Honda Fit. Right. You have no choice but to spend 1.2 on that. But it's for, it's for your family use of your mom, business use. Then you do the maths. Like if you have 600,000, you can get a fairly used locally unit yes. to serve the same purpose. Other than spending this, uh, a double amount for the smaller car, just because it's a two, two years or three years younger yeah. on the import side. Yes. John, now uh, I'm glad you're here because you're a good friend yes. and you're here to represent e-mobility. Yes. That's the future. Yes, for uh, sure. Perhaps paint a picture of the e-mobility. Uh, how, how much are we taking up in Kenya and what does it look like globally? What are the best countries in terms of e-mobility? What are they doing differently? Uh, okay. So first of all, uh, here in Kenya we have about a thousand fully electric vehicles currently in the country. Okay. And that includes... Uh, four-wheelers, two-wheelers, and three-wheelers. Uh, the two- and three-wheelers are, of course, the largest number. Uh, the four-wheelers are about 120, 150. Okay. Yeah. And um, so what we do is that we actually just support the, 
we support them by building their charging infrastructure. Uh, in terms of uh, globally, what we're seeing is that uh, 70% of all electric car vehicle sales are occurring in China. Okay. With their 30% spread out everywhere else, the US, the Europe, and a very small percentage here in Africa. Yeah. Yeah, so I know that uh, people talk about the, ne the cab in front of you is always a Toyota. Yeah. Maybe that might change and it might be Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And what are they doing differently to enable their people to own? Because EVs are not cheap. Yes. So um, the Chinese government has done quite a lot to spur the growth of the industry. Okay. Um, first of all, we all know that uh, China had a very big issue on pollution. So what they did, they uh, mandated there are certain days where you cannot enter the city with a, with a car, that, with a gas car. Secondly, uh, electric vehicles were given special number plates, so the number plates were green. And if you wanted to do gas cars, it means that you had to pay more, actually. So it was uh, the reason why they are leaders is because of has a lot to do with the government being very intentional about uh, supporting the industry. Right. Yeah. So, William, let's yes. now go back to <laughs> what we consume the most, yes. and it's petrol cars. Yes. So previously, uh, let's talk about financing, yeah. uh, the, the current type of financing. Because previously, if you wanted to own a car, yes. you'd have to be as rich as the amount of that car. So if it's two million, you have two million cash, go cash in. Yeah. But right now, there is different models of financing, and you, do, uh, you deal with that. Yes. What, what, what is financing like right now, and is it getting better? Will it get better for the consumer? And what are the models that you maybe think is more friendly to the consumer? Okay, um, I think previously the, we had the mainstream uh, banks which are mainly foreign, but then you have uh, uh, local banks that have opened up that have brought in a competition. They encourage the people to borrow. You know, they started as a circle, but they developed into banks. Yeah. So they identified a need uh, in the market uh, for, for lending. Yeah. And uh, other than doing uh, things like uh, real estate and all that, they realized that uh, you can no longer call a car. Um, uh, it's, it's actually an asset because you need it. We don't buy cars for luxury, it's part of it, but you buy it because you need it uh, for daily use. Right. Now, as an uh, auto check, uh, first of all, auto check's uh, background is uh, we were the former Checky. Yeah. Checky provided a platform where buyer and seller uh, would meet, but we realized there was also that need for uh, 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 financing, which is what was lacking. Yeah. So, auto check has stepped in to First of all, first in the process, that within 48 hours, if you're buying a, a used car, we can appraise you uh, within two days and you pick up your car. We do all the transfers and uh, you have your unit. It's purely been driven by competition and more so as I'm saying, uh, because um, locally the banks are opened up to, to, to lending. It's purely competition based. Mm -hmm. Now, which cars are we seeing? Um, the advent of uh, digital cars has fueled that. Okay. That uh, if you're running other franchise, it's very easy to get uh, financing because it's not about you as an individual. Yeah. It's about the person who's coming in to guarantee. So the digital uh, cab companies have uh, guaranteed uh, most of these uh, buyers yeah. and you found a niche there and done that. Yeah. And then there's also uh, employers where you get into agreement with the, with the banks yeah. where they sort of give a guarantee. It may not even be in terms of cash. Yeah. Um, but they give a guarantee that uh, you know this person is permanently employed and there's a check-off system. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, now you have the microfinances, uh, microfinance companies, you have uh, circles. Right now getting access to credit uh, to buy a car is, is easy. Okay. Yeah. At Moto Consult, it is about yeah. getting a car, uh, the money bit. How is it like? Uh, I would say the, the financials have really come through for us. Yeah. Because before we could have that thing of the uh, client has an interest on a car, uh, they have maybe part of the money, like 50%. Yeah. But when you approach now the main financiers, then uh, there were a lot of checks and bureaucracy before you get a loan. Yeah. Yeah? Now we can see, like, uh, let's say, auto check. They have come in and giving us a lot of, uh, what do we say, financial, financial choice. Yeah. yeah, and also they are able to uh, see 
acquire you, your feet and they, they, they take you there yeah. and they, they pay us off. So they are left now with the financial. Us as a sales uh, company, we are paid off of our cars. The client will pay his part. We approach the financiers as I check or you know, the, uh, coming up with financiers. Yeah. We are paid off. So we just introduce the client to them. As we have closed our, our, our business and we are happy. And for sure, before there was that thing of microfinances or lenders yeah. were a bit brutal to the clients. That yeah. case you, you are late to pay or something. Yeah. But today we have that, even us as dealers, we don't want to subject our clients to such. Right. So we also want the clients to come again or refer some more clients to us. So as a motor console, let me talk about now motor consoles, we choose who to where to, to, to introduce our clients to. Uh, Auto has are doing very well in the market. I'm sure today Thank you. we are helping many other dealers. I can attest to that. Thank you. Uh, and I'm happy. Today we can sell as motor vehicle industry second hand a lot. A lot of second hands are doing very well because of the financials. Yeah. Yeah, and we're happy. So, William, maybe just a quick one. Yes. What is the most popular car on Auto right now? Or the three most popular cars? Um, okay, depending on the classes. Depending on the sales. But if we also talk also. about uh, uh, numbers, yeah. uh, what would be the Honda Fit? Okay. Uh, especially the hybrid. Yeah. Then there's the, the new Mazda Demio. Okay. Um, and also the Nissan Note. Nissan Note has uh, come up uh, quite a bit. Right. So, yeah. used or brand new? Those would be freshly imported cars. Oh, nice. Yeah. How much are they going for right now around? Uh, Anything from around uh, 1.1 to uh, 1.3 for a fresh import. Um, yeah, that's that's a friendly price. But John, this will bring you in. Yes, there's no friendly prices in electric vehicles. How? Uh, and I'm seeing more and more electric vehicles on on the road. There are buses, um, more two wheelers, mm -hmm. uh, but also personal cars. Yes. Uh, just the other day at Tesla, we were talking about the white one. Yes. And people will still buy electric vehicles. How are they getting them in? Um. So that's a very that's a very interesting question. What we saw um, uh, recently, there was uh, an electric vehicle company that uh, unfortunately closed, yeah. and uh, what we thought was that um, the usage in our chargers yeah. would actually go down. Yeah. But what we found was that it has month over month it is increasing. Yeah. So that means that uh, Kenyans are buying, more Kenyans are buying electric cars. That's what you know, we thought uh, the data would, uh, you know, would, our usage would go down. Yeah. So uh, with that, I actually we were having a conversation with the dealers here. Yeah. And what they're telling us is that uh, more and more Kenyans are actually approaching them, yeah. asking for importation for electric vehicles. Okay. So um, uh, actually, they would actually be able to tell us yeah, in terms of the trends, what it is that, uh, or rather, our people or our Kenyans are uh, asking for electric vehicles. Yeah. 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 And that's an open market for you because if more and more Kenyans act, ask for electric vehicles, then charging stations, and that's what we'll talk about in the next bit. But for now, let's now talk about the current trends. Let me, let me just ask, uh, Titus, you mentioned something about people taking up more... More, they just want mobility, yes. something that is functionable, and you move. Mm. But on the road, we see more, also more, more and more luxurious cars. Mm. What is it like in terms of taking? Are people coming for uh, the mobility thing, or also luxury cars are going? Uh, the, 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 there's two groups. Just talk uh, from observation. Mm -hmm. One, when guys are buying a, a car, they look at the need. Okay. That's very crucial. Yeah. Uh, someone going for maybe a fast car, they do a lot of research or, or searching on why are you buying that one car? Yeah. How much do you want to spend? How much are they going for in the market? Uh, now that one will go for a practical car. You go to go to the office or commercial or stuff. So they are not very specific on what. Their list of what they are looking for in a car is very different. Yeah. One, they will come with the consumption, running cost, of the car, the pricing uh, at point the support market support. Okay. After buying the car, how do you service the car stuff? So that's the first group. They are very. For example, we usually take them on a tour 
of that car. Yeah. And it takes some time before you sell a car to such a person. Because yeah. they need to understand whether what they have heard, what they have researched, does it resonate with what they are seeing in the ground? Yeah. Or do they fit to that car, whichever car brand? Yeah. But also on the branding, then nowadays there's no much specific on which brand you're buying. It's what suits you. Because someone will come looking for a different model of a car. Yeah. They come to a to motor consult. I'm able to, to give them a different model and they move to that without any, uh, you know, hassle or, or convincing. Because yeah. they could see this is more spacious, maybe the, the consumption is better, yeah. is more modern, and the pricing is the same with the other option, yeah. which maybe is highly priced, is a bit standard. So that. Now, the second group is the luxury uh, car group. Of course, someone looking for luxury, most of them are not first buyers. Right. They've had a car before. Because you are okay, say this is a, this is a second buyer, third buyer, or you already have that practical car. Yeah. The second car, the luxury car, maybe for the weekend, for safari. So on that, it's like when you want to treat yourself, you want to go to the next restaurant. So on driving a luxury car, there are things they look at. Maybe they will see the, 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 the interior. Okay, of course, the outside has to be very impressive yeah. or attractive, yeah. the color stuff. Now, the accessories in it. Who does it come with? How is the cockpit? Yeah? How does it look like? Yeah. When you sit inside, do you, are you just flat? No. Is it talking to you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we call them machines. Yeah. Is it to see <laughs> Yeah, this generation today, yeah. they're not just buying in a car. They look at, they don't choose which car. Yeah. But now, if you look at the luxury cars today, you get in, you're like, wow, it wows you even before it starts. Yeah. The moment you do the ignition, the lightings come all It's only during the daytime, yeah. but what comes out yeah. is something you want to associate with. Right. And also maybe the leather trims, the chrome trims, but the original chrome trims, not the one that shouts a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you just feel nice. Yeah. Also maybe things like sunroof. Someone can like a car from demonstration, but it lacks only one thing. Yeah. Just maybe a power switch somewhere that he saw in some, some other car. Yeah. He will stop buying that car at the bank door. Yeah. Just because he realizes that car doesn't have that function he was looking for. Yeah. So luxury is pure choice. Because yeah. someone goes to luxury, he has the money. But what is he buying himself? Right. Yes. If you're just joining us on, on this webinar, our, our guest is uh, John from EV Charger, uh, William Gatoto from AutoCheck Kenya, and of course Titus Mudaka from Consult, uh, Motor Consult. And I'd like you to send in questions, uh, if you have any questions, especially if you're a first-time buyer or if you want to upgrade. Uh, really heavy experience here, spanning 25 years from William, more than 20 with Titus, and John is in the EV space, something that is really strange. So you can send in your questions if you, if you have anything to ask, because primarily this is a webinar. And so, uh, William, you mentioned something about the most, the most cars you're selling right now yes. is um, uh, the Demio, Fit, and Axela. Uh, no, no, and uh, no. Nissan Note. And Nissan Note. Yes, none of on those, the small cars. Uh, sorry, yeah. none of those is, to is Toyota. Uh, none of those is a uh, Toyota. So uh, this this is good for the consumer because more options. Yes, uh, is good for the consumer because of competitiveness. But what does that say about Toyotas right now compared to the past? I wouldn't say uh, Toyotas are bad cars. Actually, in terms of uh, technology and uh, reliability, yeah. uh, Toyota stands out because the truth is, regardless of uh, which part of the country you go to, yeah. there'll always be a Toyota mechanic here somewhere. There'll always be a Toyota spare part uh, somewhere. Mm. You know, they are, they are easy to run with, and that, that is what has uh, made them uh, popular. So yeah. let me come into uh, their defense. Um, but the reason you're seeing a lot of these changes is, again, as I said, these are millennials. Yeah. So they lean more towards tech. They're yeah. not buying the brand. They're buying uh, features. Right. Mm. Somebody saw something about uh, adaptive uh, cruise control, and that's what they're buying. That's all they want in that car. Yeah. So yeah. if that would be found in a Toyota, they will yeah. buy. If it's found in a Honda, it will be found in a BMW, and they can afford that. They will go for it. Right. You know, for the for the uh, small car segment, medium segment, we say there's the Axelas, there's Audis now coming in uh, yeah. uh, big time. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, uh, VW, VWs yeah. and VW and Audi are one group. Yes. Now those are known for reliability. 
they are known for fuel consumption uh, because the cars done by VW Group. The quickest selling point is their uh, fuel consumption and uh, their reliability. Yeah. And then they also have a longer um, uh, service interval. Okay. Whereas you're doing a uh, 5,000 kilometers on other cars, when you go to the European side, let me say European, yeah. you're looking at at least uh, eight to 12,000 kilometers, mm. which ideally for anyone, it means uh, like uh, one service uh, a year. Now, um, then when you go to the high end, uh, just as a title said, these are, these are the people who've gotten to that level where they don't buy out of need. They buy out of what makes them feel good. Yeah. Allow me not to talk about uh, brands. I've worked in uh, luxury brands, yeah. uh, you know, for, uh, for two luxury brands in, uh, in Kenya. Yeah. And when you talk about uh, trending, the most interesting, the interesting thing was uh, when middle to low class uh, sales were going down, yeah. the luxury car sales uh, would go up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the ticket value for these cars is not, you know, you're not looking at uh, five, six, uh, uh, seven million. Actually, the sales would be from between 12 and uh, 18 million okay. in between there. Yeah. Those sales uh, would go up. Why? Because they, don't, they do things differently. Yeah. They don't do things like uh, other people do. Yeah. So when you're running this way, they're going the other way. Right. <laughs> yeah. So for them, it's a fad. It's what makes them uh, 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 feel good. So as I said, it's, it's different at yeah. different levels. Yeah. yeah, I do a lot of tech and I know how technology changes the consumer's preference. Yes. And that what I has said, I want a car that speaks to me. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it speaks me, to me through, I don't know if it's the sensors for BMW users or whatever, sport for me and whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, John, mm -hmm. I, I like the environment. I assume I like the environment today. Yes. And I want to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. And so I want an EV, but I'm... Um, the first time buyer, so I'm entry level. What's, 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 uh, wh where should I look? Uh, how do I start if I want an EV right now? Uh, yeah, good question. So what we're seeing is that uh, people are importing for themselves. Yeah. The most uh, common car is the Nissan Leaf. Okay. That is the most common car. Yeah. So that is what everyone uh, sees as the first electric vehicle. And the reason for that was that uh, Nissan Leaf was the first electric car that was actually produced back in 2012. Yeah. Um, we all get our vehicles primarily as second-hand vehicles. And um, so that means that now that Nissan Leaf is the first car that will come. A lot of the newer vehicles are actually getting into production now. Okay. And so unless you're going to get a zero mileage car, mm. which is uh, a bit on the, <laughs> the price side is not the best. Yeah. So until the markets in Europe or Japan or even China are able to use those vehicles, then now after that we can get them at a price point that makes sense to us. Yeah. Okay. So anyone who might want uh, probably the Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Our company car is a VW E-Golf that we've had. Yeah. Um, it has served us well. We've done over 36,000 kilometers. It's a KCY. Okay. Yeah. So for anybody who wants, I'd probably start there. Start with the Nissan Leaf yeah. or the VW E-Golf. Okay. Yeah. And then speaking about, and you know, the, the Leaf, mm -hmm. KT News audience know we have really good, uh, a good review of it. Yes. Uh, one of the most repeated electric vehicle episodes, we did a review on, on the Leaf, a new one. That was one nice car, because especially of the, the gear where you just flick and you're, and you're moving. But in terms of consumer and the trends, that's what we are talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, the most, we are talking about the, the I don't want to use some word, but uh, the smaller cars, the Fit, Demio, and, and, yeah. and the Not. Yeah. But millennials yeah. want sport, sporty cars, mm -hmm. uh, tech savvy, and those are more European cars. Yes. So William, what are you looking at in terms of the future consumer? Um, in the near future, yeah. we may not have uh, saloon cars anymore. They will not be in the small car segment. We have now the crossovers. We have the cars like the Mazda CX-3. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we say it's, it's the four-wheel for the Demi. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. most of the, what you get in that, it, it comes in the CX-3. You'll find cars like the uh, BMW X5, yeah. the Mercedes uh, GLA, G, you know, multi-purpose uh, vehicles. 
I see the future going to uh, compact uh, SUVs and crossover. Okay. Yeah, because you get both. You see, a crossover serves you on both uh, luxury, whether you're doing that, whether you're doing uh, off-road. If it's about uh, fuel consumption, mm. I don't think that's something we can even discuss uh, anymore. Yeah. Because part of the tech is the car's ability to yeah. have a very good uh, fuel consumption. Right. So there's that. There's also a bit of a hybrid uh, coming in. As you go along, yeah. you'll begin to see a lot of uh, uh, hybrids uh, coming in. Yeah. And right now, that that's also becoming another trend. Yeah. yeah. And I also pray that uh, with the EVs yeah. that comes in, because again, when it comes to uh, clean energy, it, it's all about us. You know, whatever yeah. we are facing right now with uh, 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 green gases, uh, yeah, it's all purely because of uh, the poor fuel grid. Right. Yeah. And about SUVs and sedan, what's the difference there? Because there is, in both sides, there is a luxury car. Yeah. But uh, what type of people come for uh, SUVs versus the other side? Titus. Uh, uh, of course, SUVs have gotten to be very popular. Yeah. Because if you look at now the, the a good sedan or saloon car, yeah. uh, in terms of in terms of maybe the fuel, yeah, uh, consumption and stuff, they are carrying the same size of engine. Yeah. Yeah. On the smaller sedans, yeah. up to 2,000 cc, also goes to the SUVs, and also. I believe all, both of them can be used on daily use, yeah. and the pricing is not very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so you'd rather buy an SUV rather than sit down, just in case. Okay, the roads are not very bad now. You cannot go through. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> if you feel like you are you're on the floor, you can add 200,000 or 300,000. Yeah. <laughs> you yourself an SUV, you sit up. Uh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the SUVs are getting very And that's why I think, uh, as William has, has said, we can see that transition of many manufacturers. They are killing this, this the, that middle, uh, middle cars. Yeah. So they are the, the small ones, yeah. like what we are talking about, the, the commercial, the small, the small cars. Yes. Yeah, the Demio yeah. stuff. Eh? Yeah. And the Demio, the notes, those are now, we call them small cars. Yes. In the industry. Now, the medium cars are easy, system. the premium stuff, ISO, premium. Nissan, maybe Latio, is yeah. so. If you look at the pricing of those and the pricing of a uh, RAV4, uh, CRV, yeah. X Trails, mm -hmm. Kina A3, yeah. Kina GLA, yeah. those on the European, mm -hmm. the X3s, yeah. BMWs, the pricing is not that much mm -hmm. right. difference. Yeah. So, you if given a choice, mm. uh, the difference is 500,000 and you have financing to go by, yeah. so you'd mm -hmm. rather buy an SUV and you drop the other one. So that's why many of manufacturers are, are going towards the SUVs. Yeah. Even in the second hand motor vehicles uh, space, yeah. we are selling more of SUVs than small ones. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but customer preference again, mm -hmm. I'd rather sit down on an athlete than the, the athlete. <laughs> okay, now that, because that's, that's something uh, else inside and everything. Now, now, now that, that's the group now we are also we are talking about. Why are you buying that car? Mm -hmm. Okay, the need. Yeah, huh? The need. Okay. Yeah, someone going, but, but at least it's a very nice car. The the, the new shape the, we have the attendants, very nice, powerful cars. Yeah. So those are guys who will go for speed, who go for presence. Yeah. yeah. Of course, there is that age group. Mm -hmm. They have the money to spend. They also know cheap cars because that like the athlete is going to three million now. Yeah. yeah. The attendants are two million plus, so they are not cheap cars, mm -hmm. and these guys are spending on that. Yeah. And uh, just because they have that thing, oh, one is presence. Yeah. You drive in a uh, athlete, your peers will tell you you have a, hey, yeah. you're driving a good one. Yeah. But on practicality, I would, I would say, I don't think it would be more practical than an SUV. Yeah. Yes. Makes sense. But back, back to you too. Yes. Uh, we, we, the most popular cars are the, the three. Yes. The three go for less than 1.3 million. Yes. Now, is there, what are the cars between, if, if I'm getting into the market as a maybe first time buyer, mm -hmm. and I want a car between 1.3 or say 1.5, I have 1.5 to 2 million. Yeah. What are the most, what are the trendy cars in between there? William. Uh, personally, it will be the crossovers, the ones you're calling the small uh, uh, SUVs. Okay. Um, because honestly, it doesn't make sense that you're spending 2 million shillings 
to buy a car that's down there. Yeah. Our rains are just about to begin. And if you've noticed, if you look at the trend uh, lately, let's, let's just say for the past uh, uh, three years, eh? yeah. um, it was known when it begins to rain, people with saloon cars and uh, small cars, you leave it at home. Take public means do whatever. Yeah. But now when it rains, the amount of uh, traffic we have, leave alone the uh, other, other factors, yeah. You're so comfortable. You know that uh, today you drive in that train uh, without any issues. Yeah. Today yeah. you want to go uh, up country. You don't need to borrow somebody's car or hire yeah. because you're on that car, high car. That's right. Yeah. And then now the fact that uh, you have a uh, financing because the difference between uh, a five hundred thousand shillings uh, difference when you're financing, yeah. you'll not feel the pinch. Right. Mm -hmm. If you spread that over four years, honestly, you'll not feel the pinch. So you buy what is uh, practical. Yeah. 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 But that's that's what we are seeing, and also. Um, agreeing that uh, other than the uh, usage it's also where you are at in life right. most people don't buy suvs as their fast cars mm -hmm. most people who bought if you even remember when you bought your first car yeah, sure. it was not an suv <laughs> you bought that car that you want to bang around mm -hmm. then as you get more experienced now you start uh, upgrading right. yeah it's it's where you are at in life yeah yeah so if i have more than 1.5 i'd rather go up than buy those yeah that's what you're saying yeah uh, Titus, what do you think? Uh, mm -hmm. Titus, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, also the, it depends on the, the client's preference or your preference or yeah. what your dream has been. Yeah. But you go for that 1.5 saloon car. After one month, you realize you made a very big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It could be out of influence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your friend is driving this, or the other person is driving this. But you read the, the features on it is just good. Yeah. But practicality or uh, anything above 1.5 yeah. not unless is that luxury you're looking for yeah. yeah or maybe you have the 1.5 car that's a saloon yeah. and you have a, a bigger car yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. occasionally you just in case you need to go out of town yeah. or some maybe where we live today uh house in Nairobi kidogo mm -hmm. there are those roads that you need you'll meet one or two potholes that you cannot uh, handle that a smaller car cannot handle yeah. or you feel like you're punishing that small car yeah. And also those small luxury cars, yeah. they call it them. They are not. They don't come easy in maintenance. Yeah. yeah? If you break something, the bumpers, the extensions, uh, you'll always be in the garage. So you yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah. Yes. So anytime a small SUV. Now maybe before you graduate to the luxury, mm. yeah. the luxury four wheel drive. Yeah. I'd like examples of yeah. these small SUVs we are talking about. Yeah. Depending on uh, what you're looking at, we have. Uh, I'll talk more of the used what I'm, I'm selling. Okay. Maybe someone graduating now from this level to the other. Yeah. Those are what you're doing a lot of motor consoles. So we have uh, the Toyotas, but we have the Vanguards, we have the Raffles, yeah. used, slightly used. Yeah. With 1.5, you get a very good second hand, mm. not badly yeah. used. Eh? Okay. We have the Mazda CX-5, a very popular model today. Yeah. It's doing very well. We have Honda CRVs. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Nissan x they are also yeah. very nice and spacious. Now, we come to the other side of it. There are guys who don't want to, feel, to, to, to listen to the Japanese cars. <laughs> yeah. Talking to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you want a machine? Yes. A machine. Yeah. So you go now to the Mercedes side. Yeah. Mercedes on the forward side, we have the ML class. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used one maybe with around 2 million to get a good one. Yeah. Um, we have the BMWs. X3, X5, we have uh, X1 is more a smaller one, but a good class. Yeah. We have Audis, A3. Yeah. Yeah. So those are now, now uh, maybe A7. Yeah. Those are now uh, what you transit from. Yeah. From a smaller SUV going out to the bigger, because now the proper four wheel drives. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the conversation. You've started the, the European cars conversation. I thought we'd never get there. <laughs> but before yeah. then, um, yes. I, I, I do a lot of electric vehicle yes. stories. Mm -hmm. And for that, I get a lot of questions and I'm, I'm put on the spot. Okay. And the conclusion is usually not so good. Sometimes good, not so, some, sometimes good, not so good. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting you on the spot here, John, in, in terms of charging stations. Mm -hmm. You do charging stations. Yes. What are the challenges in getting charging stations in places like Nakuru? Because this interim place, Nakuru, Eldoret, for someone to do a long distance, uh, that and then what is the general uh, sense of, maybe what's the general view of charging stations? Why aren't there many charging stations in Kenya enough? Um, okay. 
So uh, electric mobility has an interesting problem. Uh, it's called the chicken and egg. Mm. So um, someone will ask you, uh, why can't I take an electric vehicle? The answer is there are no charging stations. Mm. And uh, us as people who build charging stations will be like, why aren't we building more charging stations? Because there are no cars. See, mm -hmm. so um, uh, as a company, what we did, we decided to build the stations, let people know that they are there, and then now you can have some bit of uh, you, you can actually feel comfortable to buy because you have actually seen an electric charging station. Mm -hmm. yeah. You actually know that uh, these things are there, mm -hmm. that uh, we can serve you and it can help you. You know, yeah. So. One of the strategies that we have done actually is that we have put our charging stations outside Nairobi. We put up one in uh, Nyali in Mombasa. We intend to put up another one in Nakuru and another one in Kisumu. Yeah. Like you to talk to me. I'm ah. sorry, William and Titus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, see as if you go, and that is the that is the biggest. Um, that is the that is the biggest. That is what we hear from people who want to buy electric vehicles. Okay. So that's what we are doing. That's the problem that we are solving. If we're able to put up in Nakuru, Kisumu, probably we put up one in Eldoret, yeah. and then now go back and uh, connect now. Uh, Mombasa and uh, Nairobi, right. such that uh, anyone who actually is able to buy an electric vehicle will feel comfortable enough to be able to use it. Right. Yeah. And what's the challenge of setting up one? Because I'm sure you have infrastructure and everything. So what's mm. the challenge in terms of an enabling environment? <laughs> we, we would, um, so let me speak about uh, Rwanda. Rwanda have done something very good. I'm yeah. answering your question. Yeah. What the government did is that uh, they zero rated uh, taxes on electric vehicles, batteries, electric charging stations, yeah. and uh, you know anything to do with EV. Yeah. So it would also help if. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like how you, I like how you friendly you are with the system. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, yes. Good man. <laughs> yes, it would also help if we could actually. Uh, get some uh, incentives mm -hmm. as an industry. Yeah. We know that the budget is uh, being read in June, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the president has, was in COP and uh, he said that uh, he is uh, supporting renewable energies yeah. and electric mobility. So we hope that uh, that can translate to actual policies that, yeah. can, spur the, uh, that can spur the industry. Right. Yeah. I like his post he the president's posture with technology yeah. and digital advancement, so perhaps yeah. he can think about it. Yes. Uh, so that brings us to that conversation on um, where does the, uh, the European cars come in in terms of consumption? Uh, which cars are the most maybe who, who, who is the target customer for uh, the, the European cars? Maybe speaking on your past experience also William. Um. I think the highest number went to the middle class. Um, the uh, you know the Mercedes uh, E class, the BMW uh, 5 Series, you know, uh, round about there. Yeah. Because those are balanced cars, both on a luxury, on a normal usage, on everything you need uh, to do with that car, it is there. Yeah. Um, but what was also <laughs> interesting um, is of the two cars that I've mentioned. Um, now that I've already mentioned uh, their names. Yeah. They will easily give you, you know, doing a long distance, they tell you if you're driving this car at, say, uh, up to 110 kilometers an hour, constant. Yeah. It should give you around uh, 18 kilometers per liter. Right. Now, 18 kilometers per liter with uh, other vehicles from other uh, markets, yeah. there's one thing that you're benefiting from, other than the luxury. Yeah. There's a safety aspect that comes in. Okay. Technology in these cars is so high. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, accidents and because they have things like uh, crash mitigation. Yeah. They have uh, lane keeping assist, meaning uh, you know 
before you change your lane, it warns you. Some will even bring you back. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm very passionate about uh, European uh, vehicles, mainly because of that uh, uh, safety aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And the people who buy that, other than technology, it is mainly due to uh, the safety. Okay. Yeah. But fuel is no longer a discussion when it comes to European cars. Okay. Yeah. Titus, in terms of locally used cars, yes. the people who come for locally used cars, yes. because already the prices have been stepped down, even for European cars, mm -hmm. do they look at European cars also more, or is there is there like an entry point for European cars in Kenya mostly? Yes, in fact, we have a, a very good market for used European cars. Okay. Uh, as long as the previous owners have maintained the, the vehicle well, this should be a very quick buy uh, sell yeah. on our side. Right. So, because we have that group, or the, or the, the mark, or I don't know what to, how to group it, they don't want to be the normal person. Mm. Yeah? They are young. Yeah. Most of them are young. Yeah. They don't want to be the Toyota people, the Toyota or the, the <laughs> Japanese side. <laughs> Toyota and people. also, they cannot reach mm. where they want to be. Yeah. So, they are like, uh, when you're driving a used European car, yeah. you cannot be profiled. Yeah. Okay. A clean, uh, let me, uh, allow me to name some brands, a clean Mercedes Benz, even if it's a K, a something, you know, 1980s, as long as it's clean, you'd move with you to a building, you're driving a Japanese car, 20 years younger, the door, the gate will be opened for me, you'll be closed out. Yeah. As long as that car is making a statement for you. So we have that group. And they, they look for they go out looking for that very well maintained car, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, either way, they are, I think they also the technology of, of manufacturing yeah. on the European one are very high. Yeah. We see that very old one. The car, there's no way you cannot go with it. You just need to fuel, serve as well, yeah. and you are good to go. Oh, okay, something else, uh, maybe a disclaimer on that on that on the European cars. Which parts do you put in it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you have a problem with that, uh, it can it can make you hate yeah. some models because yeah. of the past. Maybe the plugs you put, you you are given the wrong plugs for that car. Yeah. It will double in consumption. It will even stall. Because yeah. sometimes you say, if you put a wrong part, yeah, a, a fuse, you put in a European machine, that fuse, that car will punish you one day. Yeah. Yeah. You drive it to some place. You are en route to Mombasa, yeah. you take a stopover somewhere, you switch off for a soda, <laughs> it will not start. Yeah. And you give it a wrong small switch yeah. a year or two years ago. Yeah. So it's how are you maintaining those cars? Yeah. Otherwise the, the used European market is there. Right. Spring, yes, yeah. and it's doing very well. Yeah. William, in terms of uh, putting the wrong spot, uh, parts, yes, yes. we were just pre-gaming this conversation before, yes. and you mentioned uh, there's this myth about knots, I told you, and then you said there's nothing bad about knots. Yes. It's just the problem of spare parts. Yes. What's that like, and what's your advice to a consumer? I think to any... Let me say this, and I'm saying this boldly. Yeah? Yeah. There's no bad car. If that mm -hmm. car has made it into the market, regardless of yes. which uh, place it came from, there's nothing bad like a bad car. Yeah. What is bad is how you maintain the car. Yeah. Are you buying a genuine part? Where are you getting your parts from? Are yeah. they verified that these parts are, are, are genuine? No. Now, it's a bit more sensitive when it comes to European cars because uh, with European cars, there's got to be that loyalty thing. You and the, I'll call, it, I'll call them the dealer. Yeah. It's a relationship uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, but coming back to cars like, uh, say, the, the Nissan Note, put genuine parts, those recommended by the dealer, yeah. and you'll be good to go. Right. And then there's no dealer, there's no car manufacturer in the world who makes their own parts. Mm -hmm. They're all outsourced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think where we have a problem in the market is uh, um, you hear spark plugs from this company yeah. and you think it's the correct one. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that manufacturer, there's a, there's a research that went into, by the time they were shortlisting that guy and saying these are the parts you can use and they can even put their name, yeah. they float their name there. It tells you, for as long as you keep doing that, you will never have issues. Right. One of the places I worked uh, uh, some years ago in my, early in my career, yeah. we had a small vehicle, uh, European, that had done 400,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. That car was better maintained. Yeah. 
than most of the cars that we saw around. Mm -hmm. And it sold very well in this country. Mm -hmm. Purely because everything about that car was, everything about it was uh, genuine. It's mm -hmm. due for service, supposed to go at uh, five, 6,000 kilometers, mm -hmm. have its service, put in a, a genuine part. And that's my advice to anyone around. Then, um, where we are at uh, with technology also, <laughs> we know nowadays you don't need a kawaya. Those <laughs> things are long gone. <laughs> no. Those yeah. things are long gone. Yeah. Getting to know the issue that a car has nowadays is as simple as 10 minutes away, plug it in the diagnostics, it will pull out. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a wiring. It will tell you this problem is on this door at this particular part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so cars are no longer expensive uh, to maintain yeah. if you know if you know how to go about it. Right. And I think for us as uh, industry players, mm -hmm. I think that's what you should be coming out and speaking more about this yeah. and saying if it's about parts, get them this is how you tell a genuine part, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. These are the kind of the grid of uh, mechanics you should be using. Yeah. yeah. Because at the end of the day, it enhances uh, safety, it enhances, uh, you know, user experience becomes, yeah. then it will not matter which car you buy. Right. Whether it's Europe or China, it won't matter. Yeah. It will not matter. So it's, it's genuine part. Yeah. yeah. So it's just that knowledge gap where if you want to sort your car, yeah. uh, spend it on the dealer and get the right parts. I would really say the dealer. Yeah. Um, because like one of the places I worked, uh, there was and there is a training school yeah. where they'll pick uh, 55 students uh, per year, yeah. where you choose, you're either going to campus or you're going to this place, uh, to the training school. Yeah. Out of those, I think they only retain uh, uh, three on trial basis. Okay. After six months, they'll only retain one. Where do the others go? Okay. They're out here. They are well trained, they are skilled people. So yeah. it's identifying these people, knowing uh, who, who these people are. And yeah. actually, major car dealers in this country yeah. have the same thing. Yeah. I know of at least uh, three uh, training schools uh, by uh, new car manufacturers. So they are out here. Yeah. Actually, the, the, <laughs> the funny thing, when the advent of uh, social media, yeah. uh, personally, even getting a, a genuine part, I don't go to the dealer. Right. I go to Facebook into those groups. Yeah. But to, uh, where do I get this? Guys, come up. You check, you see it's true. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's what I wanted to talk about next, but because of time, I just want Titus to touch on that. Because previously, if you wanted to own an, a European car, the problem was you either don't have enough good mechs around mm -hmm. or uh, good spare parts. Mm -hmm. But right now, what is it like? As uh, William has just mentioned, uh, before we had that issue of proper trained yeah. mechanics, yeah. as time as go goes by, we have had so many independent mechanics yeah. that are very, very good on the European markets. Yeah. And if you know the dealers that have been there before, we yeah. had dealers for different European, uh, without mixing. Yeah. So if you're trained on this model, the mm -hmm. European car, yeah. you are very good on that car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you're given a different car, you wouldn't even be able to know where to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're only good on that. If it's Mercedes, it's Mercedes. Yeah. Like uh, I have a wing of maintenance yeah. because of, I'm selling a lot of uh, used cars. When got himself a bad mechanic. Yeah. So we are doing it. But in my garage, say, uh, today, if I sell you, I use Mercedes-Benz. And on duty, I have a mechanic that I know. This guy is only good on Japanese. Yeah. I will never allow him to open. I will better outsource mm -hmm. a mechanic I know. Mm -hmm. He's very far among, at Ridgeways. Yeah. I would wait for a mechanic for two days because yeah. he's handling a matter mm -hmm. on Mombasa Road. And I, I yeah. agree with the client. On that day, your car will be sorted out. Because I know this guy will come, he knows where to touch. Mm. Yeah. And they are very good. Only listening on how the car is running, they'll tell you where the problem is. Yeah. That is European mechanics. Right. Yeah. And, and to, the only issue is now, as you're saying, on used cars and maintenance, mechanics are the, sorry to say, I don't want <laughs> to <laughs> it's, it's the truth. Uh, mechanics are the one who spoils cars. Mm. There's no car that's bad in this world. Mm. Okay. You can hear someone say, a common car, let me use an example, a Toyota. One time I had a client, mm. she was selling a Toyota Axio. Toyota Axio is a very popular car. Yeah. She was selling because it had given her a lot of issues and problems. She bought an Allion. So I was like, an Axio and an Allion is the same car. <laughs> yeah. 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 But same she was telling she didn't want to see an Axio anywhere. <laughs> Just because she was using the wrong car. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's all about... Our, our maintenance side of it. Yeah. Yes. So and I will only say no, your mechanic. And then you have to transit. If you're using a Toyota, yeah. you buy a BMW. Yeah. 
stop mm. calling that mechanic my mechanic. Mm. Move from that mechanic of, of Axio Toyota mm. to the BMW mechanic. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. you'll be messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Specialized mechanics. Yes. yes. Yeah. Which is because Axio this year, according to, I listen to a, lo a lot of car podcasts. And according to one of them, Axio is going to be one of the most competitive cars. So you can't really, that's your user experience yes. and the way to do to the car. And then in terms of maintenance, you, you, John, mm -hmm. what is it like maintaining an EV? Because that, those are the strengths of an EV. Uh, for example, using your, your, your VW as an example. Yes. So um, we have used our VW. We got it at uh, 8,000 kilometers. Yeah. And uh, we've done now 36,000 kilometers. Yeah we have gone for an inspection twice okay and um so we have not changed any parts we have not uh, replaced any brake pads yeah We've, so in terms of uh, maintenance um as i've just uh, as has been alluded here yeah. <laughs> uh, vehicles get uh, get issues not because that the vehicles are bad but more on the handling side yeah electric vehicles really really remove that from the equation mm -hmm. we've taken hours to dtdobi and what they do is that they just inspect there, there is no maintenance um i i, I won't say that uh, there's completely no maintenance but the maintenance is very minimal yeah and that's what we we want such that uh when someone buys the ev they're able to to use it longer without spending too much okay yeah uh, William, yes. it's something I wanted to ask you because all of us agree that AutoCheck is one of the best platforms to cop a car right now. Yes. And I, I wanted you to just tell us wh what is it you're doing right or yep. um, what are some of the, 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 the... How do you sort your customers to make them come back and get references? What's the difference between you and maybe other... Not, not between you and any other person. What's the good thing about AutoCheck? Okay. Um... First of all, the, the foundation and the basis for AutoCheck is that we are a tech company. Okay. So we use data. We collect a lot of data uh, on user experience, on how vehicles are you know, uh, driven and uh, maintained, yeah. on what customers also expect. You yeah. know, we have a call center. The calls that come in and the CRM that uh, we use, we're able to pick data and see what is it that's making, that's driving these people. Right. So all we've done is uh, we've put that uh, data together, uh, integrated it and then given the best uh, customer experience. Right. Purely that, managing uh, people and matching it uh, with the product. Okay. So we touch on your uh, pain point. Yeah. If you know that uh, speed, because one of the biggest issues you'll allude in the market mm. is the speed by which you can get uh, funding, uh, financing for a new car. Yeah. But that's what we've also come and stepped in and you know, uh, bridged uh, that gap. Yeah. yeah. It's purely focusing on the, on, on the customer and yeah. answering, you know, touching and their pain points. Yeah. That's why you win. And also you won on the, I was seeing your, the introductions and who you are. And it was customer experience, customer experience, customer experience. I like that. And then Titus, you deal with employees who are going to maybe handle customers or handle cars. Yes. How differently do you handle them at Motor Consult? Uh, we are a team. I lead a team of like uh, six and persons. Okay. And also, the, uh, when selecting who to work with, look at someone who has something uh, in himself, not just what can he offer. Yeah. How confident is he? What does he resonate with? What the product is selling? Yeah. Does he look the part? Yeah. All those things yeah. comes, and also the interest. So the guys I'm working there, we have had some relationship for a few year, few years yeah. in different companies before. Now I came up with Motocross, and before I opened now where we are at Reduce. Yeah. And uh, you're like, you, you can have a dream, but you're working with people who doesn't even know what your dream is. Yeah. But if you incorporate them to your dream and to your, to your focus, what you want it to be, yeah. I think it becomes so easy for us to work. Yeah. Uh, because the uh, key thing on the second hand industry, I think William has been there on the new and second, yeah. and he's dealing with all of us. Yeah. So it's all about what a client gets from you. If the client walks in today, what does he see? Because there are so many used cars that are lying around the showroom. Yeah. So how, how does he connect to you? Because he has to connect with you first, not even to the car you're selling. Right. Yeah? 
So we really look at that. The PR and the customer service is everything. Yeah. And also, what solutions are you offering to these clients? You know, from the showroom, I'm selling cars. They are used cars. Of course, any used car has something that needs to be done. Yeah. So out of that, we came with the need of having a maintenance department yeah. under the same roof. Yeah. So when you buy, and this car has this and this to be done, we offer you that. We have a solution. Right. Yeah, you don't need to go there and wait for two or three, five days. So we have a solution that's agreeable on the table. Yeah. If it's some spray painting, we are doing that. If it's servicing, you leave the place with everything done. We also have the interior department, yeah. upholstery and interior department. If you have an, an issue with your leather, yeah, maybe it's torn. Like many cars will come with that. We will, some imported come with old leather inside. Yeah. We do that. We refurbish the interiors and stuff. Yeah. So we are getting more clients, mm -hmm. getting comfortable with us because we are also offering all that solution. It has been our prayer that it's coming to be. We are also cleaning, interior cleaning and stuff, and we are happy. Yeah, because we are like, the only thing you need to do is give a solution to your clients and by the end of the day, they be happy. Yeah. Yes. Right. And we thank God for that because this is happening at the motor consult. Yeah. yeah. So, William, about the future. Yes. Uh, you have experienced 25 years, spanning 25 years. Yes. You have seen a lot of changes. What do you think will be, who, who is the future consumer? What will be, what, what be, what will be his posture? in terms of what are, they, what are they looking for, what are some of the technologies that would come in, perhaps maybe hybrid cars yeah. uh, that would, they would go for. What is the future like for you in terms of the Kenyan uh, motor space? Mm. I think the future is uh, tech-driven. Yeah. Um, because when people buy, now part of the need uh, we talked about uh, uh, falls under tech. What is this car doing uh, uh, for you or to you? Yeah. It's no longer how the car looks, but what is this car doing for you? Yeah. Now, one of the biggest uh, issues in uh, Kenya has been uh, fuel consumption. So there's already a face out. We're having a lot of uh, hybrid uh, cars uh, coming in, um, and that tells you we are moving towards the uh, John's direction. Yeah. So I believe in another t uh, 10 years, we'll have moved uh, away from a fossil fuel yeah. and gone into the, uh, the, the green energy way, yeah. to the clean energy. Yeah. Yeah. John, what does the future look like? You, let me use this example. I use it all the time because someone gave me. The, um, previously, there were no petrol cars. And the problem with petrol cars, not previously, ancient days, no petrol cars. And the problem were petrol stations. Now, uh, there, are, there is electric vehicles, but there are no charging stations. So perhaps charging stations would come. So with that in mind, what do you think the future would be like for electric cars? Yeah, so um, at EV Charger, what we're doing is that we are directly tackling that issue. Yeah. Um, you need, uh, you see, we want it to become ubiquitous. I don't think right now you can buy a petrol car and start wondering where it is you'll uh, fuel your car. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that's the exact same thing that we want to do. Um, I'll give an example. The, for, for charging, it's not necessarily that you have to do public charging alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in the West, actually, 90% of charging takes place at home. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for them, what they do is that uh, you buy the vehicle, you buy the charger, you have it installed in your house. That is, uh, for me, energy independence. Yeah. Yeah. You do not, you see, and uh, it's cheaper. Yeah. It's cheaper. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll also give other fig figures as well. Yeah. For us to the company car, yeah. the tokens that we use to go around 275 kilometers yeah. would be anything between 900 to 1,000 bob. Right. Uh, I will let them do the math mm. and uh, they'll tell you <laughs> how, mm. you know. Um, so it, uh, it is cheaper. Yeah. It is cheaper. Right. And uh, so there, there are those kinds of options. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you need to have public charging stations alone. Yeah. We can come, we can put, install a charging point in your house, right. in your office, for your fleets. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, William, uh, yes. as we conclude, we have nearly three minutes. Yes. Uh, what uh, can you speak on? Can you just speak on insurance? What do you advise a buyer when yeah. it comes to insurance, the models, and whatever you advise them? Um, I would say you look at the background of the insurance company, how long have they been around, look at the reviews, look at their speed with which uh, they process uh, uh, claims. Okay. And because it's information that's uh, outside here, yeah. it will be more of the uh, uh, referrals. Yeah. But I would specifically go to how quickly do they uh, process uh, your claims in case you have one, what backup do they give you, do they tell you they are giving you a car, when you look at the car they are giving you is worse than what you're driving, so you'd rather take a cab, yeah. you know, integrity. Right. integrity of the insurance company and if they keep their word. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems with, uh, finally titles in a minute perhaps, mm -hmm. the problems with buying cars is buying used, locally used cars mm -hmm. because we shortchange each other so much. Sure. Once I get to where I stay after getting it from Westlands, it becomes a totally different car. Yeah. Maybe the problems start coming up in the next weeks. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the risk, uh, maybe uh, controlling factors someone should one tell thing, before. One thing when we are selling as dealers, yeah. uh, I will encourage as a what we do at Motor Console. When we get in a car from a, a seller, yeah. you don't know why he's selling the car. Sometimes you will have an issue with your car, you get the, the repair cost, yeah. you'd, you see you'd rather sell it to another person. Yeah? So if you don't disclose that to us, which mostly people yeah. won't disclose, yeah. so you have someone on the ground to have a good test drive on the car, right. come up with that. If there's a problem, you fix it before you give it to the other person. Yeah. Also encourage your client, he, is, he knows his way around, yeah. it's better he comes with a mechanic. Right. Mm -hmm. Check out the car, because mostly there will be no warranty on used cars. Yeah. Not unless maybe you know you buy from me and then at the gate you get st you stall. As a human being also, even a businessman, I'll come through for you. Yeah. So it's always good to have, before you pay or engage in any car, yeah. have it checks that are by your mechanic? Yeah. Yes. Right. But on our side also, we do our part, and then we leave it to the client also. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really insightful um, discussion here. And gentlemen, you'll agree with me, we need a longer conversation, and yeah. a sooner conversation, because it's trends in 2023, mm -hmm. and people are thinking about car buying cars this year, right now. Mm -hmm. And so this has been the Digger Motors webinar. Thank you so much for joining. I will share these links to our guests, and they will be so kind to respond to any questions directed to them. Uh, my name is Kelly Boss. Um, thank you so much.